honest conversations with interesting people. Hi, I'm Mike from the Genuine Chit Chat Podcast, and I talk to a wide variety of guests across an eclectic range of interesting topics. People I've spoken to include a magister from the Church of Satan, a blind Australian filmmaker, a puppeteer from Labyrinth and Dark Crystal, and I also speak to musicians of all kinds of genres, authors, actors, podcasters. Really, there is no limit to who I speak to, and the subject matter is endless. So if you believe in the art of conversation and want to hear different people talking about their passions, then this is the perfect show for you. You can find Genuine Chit Chat anywhere you listen to podcasts, and there's some video versions on YouTube, so there's no reason not to tune in. I am from beyond. Listen, and all you desire will be yours. Welcome to Spider-Man and the Secret Wars. Prepare for battle. Welcome to Brattle World, I'm your host, the ever-amazing, ever-spectacular Spider Dan, and in this podcast I spotlight entertainment's best-kept secrets that a mainstream audience may find boring. And welcome to another Puny Pod, a short-form podcast where I visit a specific film or comic book all by myself. So we are back for Yakuza Month, and we're taking a look at a character and a comic book that's quite dear to my heart, quite recently quite dear to my heart. Uh, A very complex, morally grey, ambiguous, femme fatale, full of mystique uh, and intrigue. Uh, We're going to look at Shadow, and we're going to look at her miniseries, Song of the Dragon. Now, you may know Shadow mostly from from the Arrow vs. Arrow in the second season. I'll go into that a bit more later. But she's mostly been known as kind of antagonist um, of, of Green Arrow in the comic books, created by Mike Grell. Basically, her kind of backstory is that her parents were in a, a Japanese POW camp um, and these Americans found out that this her father had links to the Yakuza and he knew where there was some Yakuza gold or treasure. Or So what they did is they tried to get it out of him at the time but it didn't happen. But after the war, after Shadow had been born, they came back and tortured um, his wife and we're going to torture Shadow as well and eventually gave up the information and his wife died from the injuries and then he out of kind of dishonor of betraying the Yakuza um, giving these Americans all this money uh, then killed himself you know committed uh, seppuku as a way to kind of repay that debt but uh, the Yakuza felt that that wasn't enough because it was such a large amount of money so they basically took Shadow and adopted Shadow and trained her in the ways of archery Uh, another kind of dishonored Yakuza was forced to train her for another kind of dishonorable deed that he had done uh, to the Yakuza and they're kind of she was there to kind of make up for what her father did so they trained her to be an instrument of death for the Yakuza so their own kind of personal assassin and that obligation that that giri that they talk about in this story is a huge huge part of um, kind of the burden of obligation or honor or that kind of thing that that heroes do um, um, though arguably, you know, again, very immor- morally ambiguous character. I will say the Mike Grell run on Green Arrow is incredible and you owe yourself to read it if you're a fan of Arrow and the Arrowverse and all that. Um, it is fantastic. It's very, it's a very kind of set in the real world kind of urban vigilante kind of story. Um, it's a it's still very political. It's a Green Arrow comic, so it's bound to be a little political. But it is a bit more kind of darker. He kills a lot 
in it. There are no trick arrows, the kind of classic stuff, you know, the classic things you would know for, for Green Arrow and, you know, what it would be expect. Yeah, it's not in Star City, it's in Seattle, so it's a very much a real city and a real place. It's a really good run. There's a couple of controversial kind of moments within the book. Um, I will I will say that. Again, I'll probably get into those in a little bit. But it's really good drawn beautifully all this kind of hand-drawn almost like a painted style is absolutely gorgeous much like this mini series as well i would read the whole thing so start with green arrow longbow hunters which introduces seattle and introduces ollie as this hunter of men this kind of urban hunter idea um that became that becomes like a key factor in in the stories and, and yeah, it's really good. Again, gorgeous artwork all the way through. You could you could literally just hang those in an art gallery, and it's just just so so gorgeous. You've got these long fight sequences, action sequences, and set pieces um, that are often told without dialogue. And to be honest, for the better. Like let the art speak for itself. Grell is an artist as well as a writer. He mostly does the writing in in the series. So starts with Longbow Hunt which is a mini series then it, the on running series the collection uh, is hunter's moon so volume one is there and then you just follow that all the way through weirdly um this mini series has not been collected digitally along with most of those collections however it has been collected in the longbow hunters omnibus volumes one and two so it, literally all of the mike grell green arrow stuff is in that so if you want the omnibus edition or you can buy this physically they've got some lovely these books are a mini series where they've got these lovely cardboard covers so they're nice and feels like a little mini graphic novel so that would suit you down to the ground but anyway uh back to shadow so this story kind of takes place between uh, a few of the volumes the digital volumes that i was talking about so this takes place between green arrow volume 7 homecoming and just before green arrow volume 8 hunt for the dragon as far as i'm aware i'm, I'm basically i'm this is based off of dates of of the issues and when they came out that's basically where i i personally place it could be a little bit it's definitely after some issues of of the green the mike grell stuff so maybe it's a little bit earlier than that but that's that's where i'm placing it based on the publication date and the dates on the books um you know in, in relation to green arrow and in relation to the mini series she's a fascinating character because I, I i see her kind of as like green arrows electra to who is that to daredevil this kind of you know this lover this antagonist that you know you never really know where she is what she sides with you know uh what she's gonna do next you know it's it's really really fascinating and her backstory is really interesting the links to the yakuza the yakuza is basically her enemy in this you know she starts working she begins she's grown up with them but then eventually wrongs them then they come after her and then she literally says right well this is it going on to speaking about controversial things so so early in Mike Grell's run he wanted to get rid of all kind of supernatural and super powered things in this um so Black Canary is a big supporting character, huge, huge, you know, big part of that, and kind of gives up being uh, Black Canary after a horrific kind of, you know, uh, torture scene, sexual injuries, um, which again, very controversial to kind of strip. You know, you could argue that she was, you know, fridged or something, and again, I'll get into that in a little bit. But, but that was that was his choice, the choice he made with that character, and it does it does come up a lot. Um, you know, it's a difficult thing in their relationship because he he killed to to get his revenge to save her, but he goes kind of quite far down like a dark path in these these issues and stuff. He does kill. It's not an easy thing, and he tries to avoid it, but he does he does kill when he feels it is required. It's a very emotional book. I will say that a lot of the stories are you know they kind of follow like a relatively simple a to b plot but it's just done really well it again i'm not even not even talking about the miniseries yet but the, the mike grell run on green arrow is 
a seminal, seminal book. Uh, and I've always wanted to read it. And finally, finally, DC released the digital versions and reprinted them finally after years of me kind of wanting uh, a graphic for it. And, and they're amazing. I will say the plots can get a bit samey. So it'll be like Green, Green Arrow is hired to hunt someone or do something, retrieve something. And then the person who is doing that hasn't given him the whole story betrays him even though he's done the mission and then you know and then he turns and then green arrow turns the tables on them basically that's the that's the kind of plot um but it is really really good like it's really well done like i said um some really interesting stuff um i would recommend reading the whole series i will say again there's i think it is so so strong but it does kind of peter out a little bit at the end um there's a there's a mini series called um i think it's called arrow the golden year which is kind of a year one and it, it just it didn't do it for me, that particular story. And, and there's a few other stories towards the end where it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's going out with a whimper, not really a bang. But, you know, in in the grand scheme of things, you know, maybe that's the right thing to do in this kind of sort of series because it's uh, kind of, it can be dark and depressing, but it can be funny as well and travels all over the world seeing stuff. Anyway, talked enough about that. Now, yeah, so that was quite a controversial thing with Black Canary getting injured, but it does play into a lot of character stuff down the line like ollie wants to have kids but unfortunately um you know he, he loves dinah lance black canary so much um she's not really that interested in having kids she changes her mind but because of the injuries um she found finds out she can no longer have children which is really tragic so shadow um ollie's is asked to hunt down shadow basically again uh, after long longbow hunters and he meets up with her and she like almost fatally wounds him and he's in this he's she she basically does that and then tends to his wounds and tries to kind of uh, make him heal and bring him back to you know some semblance of uh, you know health but during this he is in kind of this mad fever and shadow is having sex with him um, and because, you know, you know, it seems like that's what he wanted within the fever. And then she realizes that he's in a fever and then and then stops the sex uh, because he in the fever, Ollie thinks he's having sex with Black Canary. Now, this has been painted in many ways. So, some writers have painted it that Shadow is a is a rapist. I th- and I think I think when he when Mike Grell did this and went back and then I think late, much later on down the line they say that Shadow O like oh I did stop you know I didn't keep going or anything but yeah I don't know if that was because of the controversy he's trying to kind of backpedal a bit but yeah other writers have taken that and painted it in different ways different lights um yeah I'm not I'm not quite sure myself which way I fall on that particular topic I don't know you know it's not you know obviously it's not good to be raped it is not good to be a rapist and that you know and it, it, very rare that we see kind of comic book characters dealing with you know female on male rape which is which is interesting in itself but yeah also highly controversial as well now the the result of this tryst um again i'm going to go into a, a fair few spoilers for the green arrow mike Grell run so if you've not seen it i would just you know just give it a read you know it's it's brilliant it's fantastic especially the stories with shadow in are really interesting really fascinating but like we said that he's she's this morally gray character and she becomes pregnant and has a baby um which is later named robert um but you know it's green arrow because the baby has these distinctive green eyes and and ollie basically knows this and even down the line, Black Canary finds out as well, and you know her and her and Ollie are having a rocky bit in their relationship, which is normal because that's their that's their life basically. And often people mistake uh, Connor Hawk, who's another child of Green Arrow, as 
Shadow's son, which is wrong. And even though some even some comic book writers have confused that and and obviously had to go, oh no, that that was wrong. That was my mistake because they've you know Robert and Connor Hawke have been in uh, comics together, you know, face to face, and so have Shadow and Connor. Um, but yeah, I can see where the confusion is. Obviously, Connor is good. He's this Buddhist monk, so I can kind of see. You know, uh, he's good. He's good with a bow and arrow. You know, I can kind of see the link. Obviously, he's a son of Green Arrow as well. So there's all those kind of links. And Connor Hawk took over as Green Arrow for some time as well. And I think he's come back recently in the comics. The it's a it's a very kind of controversial story. Like again, I'm not sure where I fall on that. Or, but yeah, it's you know, it, you know, like I said, rape is bad. Rapists are bad, obviously. But yeah, it's um. It's it's an interesting one because it's just a she's such a morally ambiguous character, and again, different writers have interpreted her and her actions in very different ways. Um, I don't think that was initially what Mike Grell intended. Um, you know, uh, it's I I don't think it's as bad as say a kind of a, a Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four situation, but but yeah, it's 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 a little bit more vague. Uh, where the line is drawn with that, but anyway, as as much of those kind of controversial elements uh, and stuff are in it, it does make for fascinating reading. It does make for a fascinating story and a fascinating character. You know, you don't necessarily have to like her. Um, you know, the things she does, but yeah, I kind of kind of respect her in a way, like the way you know culturally and the way she's grown up and the way she's been raised and you know her needs and desires and she was like you know I can't I can't keep the man but I wanted kind of to keep a piece of him that's why I had his son you know Uh, and later on in the in the run of Mike Grell uh, Black Canary is like you know everyone's got a piece of you some piece of you and I I feel like there's no none left for me and they kind of break up and you know and again, really, really interesting stuff. The The relationships are really realistic in that run. And, um, you know, the political stuff is really fascinating and, and dark and interesting. Some great kind of betrayals and characters and everything. Just a fantastic run on the whole, you know. Again, like I said, Peter's out at the end, but, you know, it's pretty darn good. Anyway, so this mini series is quite interesting because um, there is a huge focus on on the Yakuza. I mean, all all of Shadow's stories do have some Yakuza involvement anyway, um, but I've gone with this one because I didn't want all these podcasts to be very, you know, um, you know, a boy, bit of a boys' club. So, uh, so I chose this and chose this mini series specifically, and I'm glad I did because very first issue, uh, you get a huge history lesson on the Yakuza, how they were formed, what they were about, you know, the historical kind of political winds of change at the time, post-war Japan. Very, very fascinating. It gives you a a real good grounding for this story. It's really quite fascinating. So it starts off and there's a, a World War II soldier and he killed a Japanese soldier during World War II and he took home his sword. He took home the Japanese officer's sword. And all these years, he's had PTSD, which is a huge thing in this story, this PTSD issue um, with for multiple characters. Again, get into that in a bit. He decides he needs to return this. He it's a it's a burden he's been carrying too long, and it's his obligation. Again, this geary thing that that they talk about throughout this. There's an obligation to do it. It's hard. It's difficult, but it's what needs to be done. And he takes it to an antique shop where Shadow is working. And they discover that not only was this crafted by a master swordsman, I think it's a uh, Mats, Matsumune or Mata, Matsumune. Um, I'm blanking on the name, but it's uh, this honorary, this legendary kind of Japanese sword maker. And it even has a name and very special swords have a name and it's called Slays the Dragon. And this sword is actually was created to kill Oyabuns, who are leaders or gang bosses within the Yakuza. And it's basically kind of a death warrant or a license to kill any and all leaders in the Yakuza without reparations, without kickback, without anything. It's it's it, it gives you you get off scot free basically, but you have to kill them with that sword. It's the only honourable way to do it is with the sword and with that particular sword. So anybody who has this sword can can kill and take over the Yakuza, you know, without any problems at all, without any that you can't you can't 
basically retaliate or anything. So it's, this is quite a special sword. So Shadow learns that she was partly involved in one of the... She killed one of the Yakuza leaders, so this kind of links her to it, and she decides to help uh, Mr. Ryan, he's called in the story, return this to Japan. There's two younger brothers, two two sons of the man he killed, one older and one younger. The older one has now become a monk, and the younger one is still within the Yakuza. So so the monk has gone against his kind of father's teachings and what he considered, you know, wrong or bad. And and that's basically the, the mission is to return it to him. And they go to the monastery, they return it, they meet a, there's a, a kind of a mute, almost catatonic Vietnam vet called Max Pearl, who, again, is a really, another really interesting character in this. This is only four issues as well, and they do pack a lot of stuff in, a lot of detail, a lot of history and again real history like vietnam world war ii the yakuza you know it's 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 very very much set in the real world and i appreciate that as well um obviously there's a lot of fantastic elements like um you know arrow shoots down a helicopter with an arrow and stuff but you know it's kind of part of the world as well and and it's it's really really fantastic the art is by michael davis lawrence and gray morrow who i might have talked about on my man thing podcast and again, it's this beautiful kind of painted artwork, these big scenes, um, just gorgeous, really. And the flashbacks are really vibrant and visual. And, you know, it's just, it's, it is just like art. It's pure, you know, art you could hang in a gallery. And it's really, really gorgeous. I mean, I prefer Mike Grell's art to a lot of the artists that work on the Grell's run of of Green Arrow, but you know he's he was busy writing he couldn't do both so you know it's one of those sacrifices but I, you know his writing is probably just as good as his art in my opinion but yeah so they meet the monk who is called uh Takizo and Takano is is the brother that's in the yakuza he learns of the sword Takano and sends out all his soldiers to try and get it like on mass because he can basically take over the yakuza all of the yakuza and put it under one leadership his own own with this sword and that's what he's going to try and do and the monk the uh, max pearl uh, mr ryan and and shadow and her son robert um he's not called robert for a very long time i'm not sure if i don't think that happens in the mike grell run i think it might happen afterwards but just to make make you aware it's just the unnamed child of shadow shadow's child and they all start kind of fighting for their lives they're running and, and there's various attacks from the yakuza and every issue you kind of get like a backstory for everyone you get like a backstory for Max Pearl, who was this, um, you know, this black Vietnam soldier who is trying to be in a, is kind of the PTSD of everything. You know, it's it's weird. There's this kind of running theme that the fathers of the previous wars never told the sons that there was, you know, how bad it was, that there was no glory in war. There's nothing but horror, this, this heroism and courage. Um, but the true, true horror, like nobody kind of let anybody know or pass that on. It was, you know, it's too horrific. And, and you know, the, the, the sons effectively of Vietnam, you know, suffered just as much as the, the soldiers in the sons you know, the previous war, World War Two, and the war before that. So, you know, it's it's quite fascinating. It goes really in depth. And Max Pearl, like, was inadvertently in part of this kind of uh, massacre on these innocent Viet- Vietnamese Vietnamese people uh, during Vietnam and kind of, you know, tried to try. He, he took the dog tags of a, of a fellow soldier and kind of wanted to become lost and wanted to be considered dead. And, you know, even in the monastery, you know, the monks consider him dead because he doesn't speak. He doesn't doesn't talk. He just, you know, goes about his kind of duties and stuff, cleaning and eating and stuff. But that's cooking. And that's that's it for him until this attack happens. And it kind of it spurs him on and to live and to be alive and you know and shadow talks about her relationship with green arrow because she falls in love with with max in this and you know is like one of the two men in her life that she respected or cared about and loved you know everyone else has been fairly awful to her in one way or another um which is totally understandable i get her kind of cold you know, approach to the world, but she is loving at the same time. She's caring and she dotes on her son and, and wants him to live free and, and far away from the Yakuza as, as much as possible. 
But yeah, they decide to kind of, eventually they decide to, they steal a helicopter and go to attack Takano. And they basically, and he's already trying to slaughter all the leaders of the of the Yakuza before he's even got the sword, before he's even got the right to do it. Gorgeous, gorgeous book. And the monk is really interesting to, to see, uh, T- Takizo, is really interesting and, and it's it's quite fascinating to hear again this cultural stuff this Japanese you know history and stuff now I'm well aware that this is obviously being written by a white guy so yeah there's 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 some issues with that but but I think he manages to respect the Japanese kind of culture and the people and tells an interesting story it's very you know it's very critical obviously of the US and the US government and and things like that so I think there is there's definitely it's in the right kind of frame of mind yeah ideally we would want a, you know a Japanese writer to write about Japanese characters but there's enough kind of uh, American characters in there and it kind of it, it's nice to see that culture clash as well you know culturally historically you know it's fascinating that, like Mr. Ryan has issues and doesn't understand a lot of things and it's like well you never will because you're not Japanese you know you never will and we'll never understand you you know to some level and it's like yeah fair enough but yeah they they clash they have this massive battle and in the end Takizo is forced to take over as a Yakuza leader, even though he's this peaceful monk. And, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking. And, and Shadow's like, well, if you take over, if you lead the Yakuza, he's like, well, maybe I can affect some change. She's like, yeah, but I still I still have issues with the Yakuza. And he's like, I'll give you a few days to to run and stuff. But, you know, after that, we may well meet as enemies again. So, And I believe he may turn back up in the books, um, possibly, but can't can't be 100 percent sure um but i could maybe look it up and find out but more than likely i think he probably turns up maybe in in that eighth volume i was talking about earlier possibly but there you go that's 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 it so that is shadow in a way it's uh obviously like i said you may have known it from season two uh of arrow and i you know if you, i think if you if you liked arrow you should read this run and uh, there's another problem the, again the thing with shadow is kind of all this problematic stuff keeps coming up so in in arrow they change her, her racial origin to chinese which again i think is a little problematic i get kind of why they did it because they had like um the the guy who's the archer in arrow the chinese guy i kind of i get that but then the way they use her in it there's just she's got none of that mystique or that complex kind of methodology that psychology that kind of dark and morally gray that view of the world that she has in these books and it's kind of really ruins that character she's only really there to train ollie and then to cause strife between ollie and deathstroke in it slade in it and it was just really poor, just really poorly done, really poorly handled. I really kind of wish she'd turned up more, she had more of an... Like, she came back as a villain or something, but she just they just literally were just like, female, we need a female archer, and then we'll just kill her off. So, you know, she was effectively fridged in that, so... Yeah, it's it's a real shame that this character has been through through the ringer a bit. But I find that with a lot of female characters in comics, especially like Carol Danvers as well, has been through the absolute ringer. I think she's probably at her handled now at her best, and you know she you know takes all her issues and her problems and 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 deals with them and, and addresses them like her alcoholism and things. And, and, you know, on all the horrific stuff that happened to her as well. We talked about that in our controversial comics with Avengers 200. But, yeah, really interesting. It's, this is more a kind of advert for the Mike Grell run, but this this is part of it. And I, I really enjoy this. It's a, it's a short, sweet story. Again, gives you all the information you would need and the backstory on the Yakuza and the kind of things. You see the Yubitsume that we talked about in the other podcast. You know, you see some of those kind of traditions and things come through. And again, really fascinating, really well done. Um, it is definitely not for kids as well. A lot of this stuff, like I've already discussed, these books are not for kids. There's there's an early story as well where um, there's a, a you know a homophobic hate crime and and some other stuff that goes on, a lot of sex and blood and violence. So yeah, it's not. It's definitely for mature readers, as as the books that I've read recently said suggested for mature readers. It's been really interesting reading this, and it's been really interesting character study 
Cody. Again, like I love all the characters. I love all their kind of backstories. Again, they are they are a little exposition-y dumpy, but it doesn't really matter that much. Though it's it's handled fairly well, the pacing between the books as well. It's you know, it's not perfect, I will say that, but um it's done just enough kind of justice. But I think if you have an interest in Shadow and her stories and the Green Arrow stories, again, just check out the Mike Growl run. I can talk about it all day till I'm till I'm blue in the face. Um, but yeah, yeah, there are po- problematic elements to her character and things that have been done to her character. I know in the new Fifty Two, she turns up uh, as a slightly new interpretation of her character, and she was the love. She was um, a love interest of Robert Queen, so Ollie's father, and had a baby with Ollie's father called Amika, who was again another master bloody archer. Uh, and she would later go on to become Red Arrow. So, so again, it, she's she's always really fascinating, and and again, depends what the writers want to do with her. But I like, again, I like that not really knowing, you know. And again, going back to the kind of the sadly going back to the kind of the rapist thing, you know, if if Shadow is a rapist, then Talia Al Ghul is is also a rapist. Like, and I argue, I'd probably argue that Talia Al Ghul was going into that knowing what she wanted to do. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily it's not very clear whether Shadow was wanting to do that or not. It's possible, and again, it has been interpreted that way. And again, Ollie seems to forgive her in the books like he kind of knows so it's not like he you know again i'm not I'm not saying it's cool but you know it's 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 morally you know it's a, it's a little wobbly but that that also kind of again makes her character all the more interesting that moral kind of code and that geary and that obligation that you know almost bushido code of honor that we've talked about so much this year yeah really fascinating character really fascinating read um i would definitely definitely kind of give it give it a look uh, you know if you don't don't know necessarily like i said this is a little trickier to get hold of uh, you probably have to buy the single issues or the omnibus um it's currently not available digitally like the other Arrow, mike Grell Arrow, green arrow stuff is but it's something to to look at if you're interested and if you want to know more about this character but i, d- I did find her a fascinating read again problematic where it is but but it's 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 interesting you know um and yeah it's uh it's certainly certainly something i've i've enjoyed kind of talking about and considering um again really really interesting really fascinating character um you know love her or loathe her like her or not you know disagree or agree with the way she's handled in various you know pieces of media you know we've talked about all the problematic stuff but yeah, she she is what she is, and I, I kind of I appreciate the character itself and the creation of the character. Uh, again, it's the same with any comic book character. The further you go down, someone's going to mishandle, misuse, or misjudge creative opportunities and and moments. Um, you know, you can look at J. Marco Straczynski, who did you know an amazing. Spider-Man run, but has done some other oh, the more shocking things to the Sp- the Spider-Man kind of canon, you know, awful kind of stuff. And you just think, why? Um, when you're doing such great stories, why? You know, you know, the people do slip up with with storytelling, and and they do, and I, I, and you know, like we said, it's been retconned out. The kind of the more problematic stuff has been retconned out uh, recently, and I think that's a good thing in a way. Um, I've not read those. I've only just really finished the Green Arrow run and her original interpretation. But again, I, I would go back and read more from this character and 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 more of that those kind of adventures and the links to the yakuza and stuff and that amazing kind of like dragon tattoo she has is is really cool and you know all of her stories basically have the kind of subtitle the dragon you know something the dragon so this is song of the dragon or it's blood of the dragon and various other things um, you know even the sword in this is called slays the dragon yeah really really fun really great book so um, just. Give, just give it a try if you want or I, I'd, if you don't get make it again this far to the miniseries fair enough but definitely start with Longbow Hunters because it's an absolute banger it's an absolute classic then go on to Hunter's Moon and then just follow that volume so one two three I think it's up to eight nine nine I think there's nine volumes there or just buy the two omnibuses that there are big massive omnibuses that'll probably break your wrists if you hold them too long but yeah um, this has been great um, so uh, you can find me as per usual on the social media so on facebook it's at secret boars on twitter it's at dan 
underscore balls. Instagram, Spider Dan Secret Balls. And don't forget to use the hashtag prepare for prattle. And for everything else you need to know about the podcast, swing over to Spider Dan and the Secret Balls.com on the World Wide Web. I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon. I am Jack's Musings, Paul Meller, Max Byrne, Tony Farina, Scott Hodgson for their continuing donations. It is very much appreciated and helps Prattle World keep on turning and if you ever find yourself in a position to help the podcast please consider it thank you very much guys hope you enjoyed this one take care and we'll be back next week with the final edition of yakuza month and it'll be me and my friend dan keaters looking at showdown in little tokyo 